Dr. MGR Educational and Research Institute warmly welcomes you to its world-class educational campus that showcases excellent infrastructure facility housing various departments in diverse fields of study. Faculty of Engineering and Technology. IBM Lab. R&D Microsoft Lab. Sun Java Lab. .NET Lab. CDAC Garuda Lab. Internet Center. Apple iMac Lab. Cisco Net Academy. High Tech Lab, Cyber Forensic Lab, Intel Internet of Things Lab, Communication Lab 1, Electronic Circuits and Devices Lab, QMAX VLSI Testing Center, Linear Digital Integrated Circuits, Microwave and Optical Communication Lab, VLSI and Embedded Design DSP Lab, Microprocessor Lab, Electrical Machines Lab, Electrical Machines Lab 1 and 2. Smart Grid, Digital Design Lab, Electronic Circuits Lab, Digital Simulation Lab, Linear and Digital Integrated Circuits Lab, LDIC Lab, Lab View, Process Control Lab, Mechatronics Lab, Dynamic Lab, IC Engines Lab, Center of Excellence Multi Fuel Engine Setup, Center of Excellence Biodiesel Plant, Metrology Lab, Metallurgy Lab, CAD Lab, CAM Lab, CNC Lathe, CAM Lab, CNC Milling Machine, Boiler Turbine Setup, Robotics Lab. Heat and Mass Transfer Lab, Welding Lab, Machine Shop Lab, Fluid Mechanics Lab, Manufacturing Technology Lab, Fluid Mechanics and Machinery Lab, Fluid Mechanics Lab, Survey Experiment, Survey Cam, Strength of Material Lab Concrete Lab Soil Mechanics Lab Structural Lab Environmental Lab Transportation Lab CAD Lab Biochemistry Lab Autoclave Microbiology Lab, DBT Research Lab, Tissue Culture Lab, Genomics Lab, Bioprocess Lab, Instrumentation Lab, Molecular Biology Lab, Downstream Processing, Physics Lab, Chemistry Lab, English Communication Lab Research Lab 1 Research Lab 2 Lecture Hall Computer Lab
Animation Lab. Computer Graphics and Multimedia. Chroma Studio. Advanced Java Programming Lab. Software Testing Lab. Web Technology Lab. Lecture Hall. Architecture Studio One. Architecture Studio Two. BARC Computer Lab. MARC Computer Lab. Photography Lab. Workshop BARC. Workshop MARC Workshop CRIT Room Material Museum Faculty of Medicine College Block College Lobby Classroom Anatomy Dissection Hall Anatomy Histology Lab Anatomy Museum Biochemistry Students Practical Hall Physiology, Hematology Lab, Clinical Physiology Lab, Physiology Amphibian Lab, Pathology, Morbid Anatomy, Histopathology Lab, Pathology, Research Room, Clinical Pathology Lab, Pathology Museum, Pathology, Demo Room, Pharmacology, Experimental Lab, Dispensing Room, Student Practical Lab, Museum, Animal House, Microbiology Practical Hall, Museum, Research Lab, Community Medicine Laboratories, Community Medicine Museum, Forensic Medicine Museum, Forensic Medicine Laboratories, Cold Storage, Examination Hall, Hospital, OP Reception, ECG, Endoscopy Facility, Laparoscopy Facility, OBG OPD, Colposcopic Facilities, Labor Ward, Pediatric OPD, In ICU, Optal OPD, Optal Operating Microscope, Surgery, CT Scan. Full body X ray, X ray facilities, mobile X ray, USG, ortho OPD, C arm, ENT OPD, audiometric facility, psychiatry OPD. Dermatology OPD Operation Theatre 1 Operation Theatre 2 Operation Theatre 3 Operation Theatre 4 Operation Theatre 5 Operation Theatre 6 Operation Theatre 7 Operation Theatre 8 Operation Theatre 9 
डेंटल ओपीडी कैजुअलिटी माइनर ओटी आईसीयू आईपी लॉबी फीमेल वार्ड मेल वार्ड फिजियोथेरेपी डिपार्टमेंट 24 फोर आवर्स फार्मेसी सेंट्रल लेबोरेटरी ब्लड बैंक क्लिनिकल पैथोलॉजी लैब अडयालम पट्ट अर्बन कम्युनिटी सेंटर परिवाकम रूरल कम्युनिटी सेंटर नजरत पेट रूरल कम्युनिटी सेंटर सी एस एस डी लॉन्ड्री एम आर डी Faculty of Dental Surgery Oral Medicine and Radiology Digital OPG Intraoral X-ray Skull X-ray Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery Minor Operation Theater Department of Prosthodontics Welcome to the third day of our faculty development program on multidimensional scaling from science to technology, powered by Engineering and Technology First Year in association with Office of International Relations. It's me, Dr. Lata. Happy morning to each and every one of you for being here with us today. Education is a passport to the future, but tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. During the last 15 years, we in education have moved almost at the speed of light in the area of educational technology. It's obviously, students of this generation are highly accustomed to technologies. Now they shine as a tech savvy. But we teachers should embolden ourselves as a digital, detailed oriented person, besides updating the knowledge in our own subject areas. With that in mind, today's session will be explored with one of the booming fields in computer technology, that's artificial intelligence, a buzzword, which is all around us in our daily lives. Yeah, every time when we open a Facebook news feed or do a Google search, or sometimes we get product recommendation from Amazon, and it's astonishing to see how the Google map works. But how do an Uber determine the price for our destination? The answer to all these astonishing questions is artificial intelligence. That's AI lurking at the background. Now, at this happiest moment, I would like to invite Professor Zona from Department of Mathematics to welcome the gallery. Ma'am, please. Yes, ma'am. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Proceed. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I am P. Sona, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics. I like to thank our Honorable Chairman, Dr. A.C. Shanmukam, and our beloved President, Siru A.C.S. Arun Kumar, for permitting us to conduct this SCP. On behalf of Dr. MGR Educational and Research Institute, first year Beta Campus, it is a great pleasure for me to welcome all of you here in the third day of our FDB program, multi-dimensional scaling from science to technology in association with International Relations Office. I welcome Dr. S. Gita Lakshmi, Vice Chancellor of our University, Dr. B. Srinidha, Joint Registrar, Academic and Administration, Dr. B. C. P. Sabra, Joint Registrar, Dr. N. S. Subhashree, 
Dean ENS and Dr. Kaushalya, Coordinator, International Relations Office, to be with us today. We are fortunate to have an eminent speaker, Dr. N. Krishnakumar, founder, Instagana LLC, USC. To talk about applying artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques to multi messenger astronomy. His passion and knowledge towards this artificial intelligence will make today's session very effective. We are honored to welcome you, sir. And I would like to extend our warm welcome to our participants who are all accessing this event via live video from our Dr. NGR Landsmart YouTube channel. Once again, I welcome you all. Thank you. Now over to Dr. Lata, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Prita, ma'am, for the nice welcome address. Let's all know about our renowned speaker and his credentials, for which we request Professor Aruna from the Department of Mathematics to proceed. Ma'am, please. Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, proceed. Uh, very good morning to all. I am R. Aruna from the Department of Mathematics. I am here to introduce our today's chief guest, Dr. Krishna Kumar Narayanan, sir. He has 25 plus years of experience in software designing development and delivery in the areas of system software and solutions. And he got his UG degree in the field of applied sciences from Tyagaraja College of Engineering, Madurai and his engineering de degree from Indian Institute of Sciences, Bangalore. He obtained his doctorate from Louisiana University, USA, and he has three US patents, and he has published many articles in many reputed journals. He is not only a technological expert, but also a very good listener of music, a good, very good singer, and has the ability to compose lyrics in Tamil also. Through music, he is helping many charity organizations. Words and time are not sufficient to express all his commu community activities. Once again, I feel very happy and privileged to introduce you, sir. I thank uh, Dr. N. S. Subhashri, ma'am, for uh, choosing me to introduce the chief guest. Once again, I thank you, one and all. Thank you, Lata, ma'am. Over to you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, uh, dear speaker, sir. Yes. I'm very happy to share that I'm also alumni of uh, Tiaraja College. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to hear that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, sir, it's really happy to see you at a new avenue to empower the faculty and teachers across institutions because we have been seeing you inspiring students uh, pre-COVID-19 and during the COVID-19 situation. And now uh, we would like to extend the good relation with you even after the COVID-19 situation. Certainly, ma'am. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Uh, with that, dear professors, all assembled here, let's catch up, keep up, and put up with the computer-based technology. Now, Dr. Krishna Kumar, sir, it's your turn to take the diet. So Very please. good. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Lada. So is yes. it OK if I share my screen? Uh, I have sir. Just a moment. Is my screen visible? Okay. Am I audible? Yes, sir. It's yes, sir. It's audible. Very good. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank um, uh, the entire department, uh, Dr. MGR Engineering College, the Research Institute. Definitely thank uh, Dean Madam, uh, Aruna Madam, and Lata Madam, and, and Sona Madam, and all the professors who had given us an opportunity to present um, uh, this wonderful uh, interdisciplinary uh, webinar. And um, so, uh, first of all, I want to commend the college and the institute for uh, for offering this to to uh, to the public and especially to to a lot of the uh, teachers and the students who are interested in in doing advanced research. Um, so definitely interdisciplinary is is the name of the game these days. 
uh, when when madam approached us and and talk about you know what type of uh, uh, topic we can we can present it in this in this webinar uh, we were just wondering you know uh, obviously the computer science and technology is definitely one of them and what type of uh, field that we want to apply these uh, technologies to uh, whether it should be in in in, in mathematics or physics or, or chemistry and uh, so one thing that came to my mind was astronomy and astronomy is uh, really definitely near and dear to me uh, i was always fascinated with uh, things out there in the space uh, the solar system and beyond uh, while i was uh, in high school as well as in growing up uh, in fact after i graduated from uh, tyagaraja engineering college of applied sciences i had two options either to go uh, do continue my masters in physics in iit madras or to take up uh, engineering degree at indian institute of science i chose the latter and then ended up being um, a degree uh, in in electrical engineering and then into computer science uh, and then ever since i have been i've been in that field uh, doing um, uh, mo most of the activities in the communication telecommunications and in the in the image recognition and other areas uh, if i had chosen the other path which is masters of science or physics in iit madras i would have definitely chosen astronomy and uh, so when i uh, when i was discussing with madam uh, so this topic really came up and then i started exploring and seeing you know, what kind of um, uh, advancement that are happening in the in the astronomy and and uh, definitely there are a lot of uh, uh, exciting things that are happening especially in a field called multi multi messenger astronomy uh, it is a branch of astrophysics uh, which we'll cover in a minute so we thought that we will put together a, a, a presentation that uh, how, that basically describes how to apply uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques to uh, mma um, so this is the uh, beginning of that uh, topic and interdisciplinary area is is very popular and i would say the, we are in a golden period right i think if you think about um, uh, the the advantages of computers and technology in in any field uh, it is now booming uh, many many areas in science and medicine and and social science uh, they are all getting benefited from uh, from the computers and definitely uh, this is very appropriate for for the research institute to uh, to bring out these type of topics and motivate and inspire uh, faculty as well as uh, teachers and and the students uh, to look into some of these areas so the purpose of this uh, webinar is not really solve any problem but really to to present the opportunity uh, in terms of how to combine different um, Uh, fields of uh, studies uh, in 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 computers and 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 in astronomy and how, how can we leverage the the work that has been going on uh, so that is the motivation for for this webinar so the outline for our webinar uh, first we'll briefly take a look at the background of mma uh, the multi messenger as astronomy and of course on the artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, technique as well um, and then we'll briefly talk about the ai and ml methods what are some of the commonly used uh, learning methodologies that that are used typically uh, to solve real life problems whether it is in medicine or in other other areas in in the in the industry uh, and how they are being applied um, and then we'll focus more on uh, what are some of the motivation for applying these uh, wonderful uh, ai ml algorithms to mma uh, what kind of uh, problems are we trying to solve and along the way i will also introduce um uh, an institute called ligo india uh, it is based in pune and uh, they are basically doing a lot of work in the uh, in the mma area uh, especially on the um, on the ligo part um, so i'll cover some of that as we go into the problem statement and how we can how we can address that and once we find a problem how are we going to train uh, those models uh, for for solving the problem and how are we going to verify them using simulated data first and then with real data so that's those are some other things that we will cover of course uh, like with anything else uh, before uh, you do anything you want to understand what is already out there so we'll also cover some of the popular ai ml frameworks uh, that the companies are building to 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 the community uh, and some of most of them are open source uh, software now um, so you can take some of the pre built models from those frameworks and apply them to to any field and then we'll take a look at how it is going to be applicable for for mma and then uh, we'll cover with some of the references and literature in in both uh, interesting fields mma and and ai and ml uh, we'll then open it up for any any question and answer so that's kind of a brief outline uh, i would like to introduce both these fields and then see how they can aid each other uh, in solving uh, real life problems 
first background on MMA, okay? So on the networks. Um, so multi-messenger astronomy is nothing but a branch of astronomy. Uh, it is primarily motivated to uh, understand and coordinate the observation and interpretation of uh, disparate messenger signals. So what are messengers? Messengers are any objects that are out in the space, either within our solar system or beyond the solar system. And uh, I mean, typically when we started astronomy in the olden days, a telescope was the only instrument or the major instrument that was available. Uh, people would view them using uh, light. Uh, whatever you can see is what you can observe and you can interpret. But over the period, a uh, number of instruments in the astronomy has, has gone up. Uh, it is, uh, we have very sophisticated instruments that can measure uh, not only visible light, but also in the other form of uh, electromagnetic radiation, as well as other types of signals uh, that are coming in from the, from the space. And uh, so those are called messengers. So the objects that emit any type of these signals uh, to the earth uh, are called messengers. And this is why we call multi-messenger uh, astronomy because the messenger could emit multiple type of uh, signals. It, it may not be just one type uh, like an electromagnetic radiation. As they move, they could be generating waves. Um, so this is, this is one of the reasons why this field is so fascinating uh, where different types of uh, data uh, coming from the outer space and how do you make sense out of that? And, and how do we understand and simulate and predict uh, what could be happening in the future? Uh, so this area is getting a lot of interest in the astronomy, uh, especially in the astrophysics uh, field. Uh, it's, a, it's a very active research uh, topic. So I talked about the extrasolar uh, messengers. They're coming from the objects beyond the solar system. There are at least four types of uh, uh, messengers. Uh, electro electromagnetic radiation, we all know about them. Uh, gravitational waves is, is, is something that um, uh, it is like a ripple uh, space-time uh, type of uh, wave that is uh, observed. Uh, it is very sensitive, um, so you require a uh, laser infra, infra, infrarometer, infrarometer uh, instrument that you need to, to capture those uh, waves and detect them. So you need very sophisticated instruments to do that. Of course, there are other type of messengers like neutrinos and cosmic rays. Uh, for example, uh, in, a, in a solar flare, uh, you would have probably heard in, in news that uh, uh, there is a solar flare that is approaching and it could be disrupting your a communication network or, or radio networks. Uh, so those are all some of the uh, examples of uh, events or astrophysical processes uh, that uh, receive these uh, signals, whether it is in the form of um, radiation or in the form of uh, cosmic rays or, or gravitational waves. Um, so solar flares is an example. Supernova was another example that happened in 1980s, 87 to be precise. Uh, where there was a massive explosion and uh, of of stars, and uh, it was a it was a treat to astronomers in in that in that time frame, where uh, they were able to observe a number of um, uh, signals coming into the into the Earth, and I would say that is the beginning of the uh, the MMA uh, when people when the astronomers realize that uh, uh, they they can observe not only what is uh, visible through the telescope, of course that still uh, is is still important because there are several. Uh, satellites uh, carrying uh, telescopes around the uh, Earth, and uh, they would be sending those uh, signals. But in addition to that, uh, there are astrophysical processes that are happening uh, that can be detected. And uh, once you detect them, then you have an opportunity to learn from them. And then, of course, there are many other uh, astrophysical processes that, uh, that are there in the literature. Uh, so the purpose of the MMA, uh, if you think about it, is to detect these type of uh, disparate signals uh, some of them could be coming in from the same object. So how do you correlate that uh, data uh, that is coming in? And then how do, you, uh, how do you make sense out of that? And how do you learn from that? And, in, and then over a period of time, uh, how do you simulate that? For example, how would a next supernova even would look like? Or when would be the next solar flare that could happen? Uh, so both simulation and prediction uh, is an important aspect of, uh, of astrophysics, especially in the, in the MMA uh, community. And uh, so as and when the, the, the number of events, uh, the astrophysical events that, that grows up, as well as the data that is coming in from those uh, objects increase, uh, that's where the technology uh, becomes important. And uh, so in terms of uh, computing power, uh, uh, processing power, as well as memory storage, uh, and analyzing in real time and getting that information out to an astronomer uh, is going to be very, very important. And uh, I've noted some, um, networks out there. Uh, S News is one example. 
and uh, so some of these networks are getting automated what what do i mean by that they're already bringing in uh, several of these uh, computer algorithms to to interpret them automatically uh, so they don't rely only on astronomers human uh, prediction but also some computer based prediction and simulation um, so this is uh, so just to think about this as a as the introduction to mma and uh, i wanted to make sure that you you have enough information and inspiration and this field is um, definitely hot and uh, some of the literature that i will show in the future slides uh, in fact as uh, later 6 months ago uh, there was an article in forbes that said uh, mma is going to be the future of astrophysics and uh, because this has a lot of potential uh, to learn more about all the galactic events and understand from them and computers uh, are going to play a major role um i think both in terms of the cloud computing because of the data that is getting coming in from the uh, from these objects are going to be enormous uh, and uh, dealing with big data is going to be a challenge as well uh, but then uh, the other aspect of uh, what we would cover now is how do we apply the intelligence and and the machine learning techniques uh, that uh, that have been developed for different areas and how do we bring them into into mma so that's a quick background on the uh, mma itself on ai uh, some of you uh, might be thinking who oh, this is uh, ai is fairly new uh, it's very hard so it must be you know 10 year old 20 year old but uh, on the contrary uh, it has been around since 1950s uh, in fact the very first conference was uh, held in dartmouth uh, i would say that's the beginning of ai and at that time the the community was trying to uh, mimic uh, human behavior and intelligence uh, and bring them into the computers and that was a very bold statement uh very tall order at the time of the uh, year basically the computers were were just beginning to happen right not many companies who were doing uh, computers and it was very very early uh, so there were a lot of frustrations for the next uh, two decades or so uh, people were basically thinking maybe we went too far uh, in in our ambition uh, maybe it is not possible to mimic uh, human behavior using computers and that's why some of the funding got uh, reduced and there were a lot of frustration among the scientists uh, then came in 80s uh, there was a transformation or a breakthrough uh, in the form of what we call as expert systems uh, these are nothing but rule based uh, knowledge systems uh, where uh, you can uh, input some of the a priori historical uh, data input and output uh, so the system would uh, would characterize them using a set of rules and then start predicting and interpreting uh, anything that is given new um so coincidentally my my phd thesis was on an interdisciplinary topic uh, so basically it is based on uh, an expert system to to interpret oceanographic images um so i will draw some parallel to how it is applicable to to mma um so in in my thesis it was mainly uh, the the satellite images uh, of of the ocean in this case it was an atlantic ocean uh, in us and uh, so the, the the satellites would send uh, tons and tons of uh, these uh, high quality high definition uh, satellite imagery data uh, pictures of the of the ocean uh, to the department of navy that was sponsoring my my phd at the time and the the idea was the these pictures were manually interpreted by the oceanographers so they would take a look at those uh, pictures and identify uh, basically oceanic currents uh, and uh, some of their characteristics in terms of you know where are they located Uh, how are they spinning what direction are they spinning what is their velocity uh, what is their temperature uh, so a lot of the characteristics of the oceanic currents uh, were relevant for for navy uh, mainly for the reason that uh, this information should be transmitted to the vessel or a ship uh, that is sailing in the ocean uh, so the captain of the ship can know uh, when to avoid a particular current uh, if they go against a current they would be uh, spending a lot of money on the fuel uh, whereas if they go along with the current uh they could save uh, fuel as well um so it was a multi billion dollar project that was awarded to the navy and it was part of that uh, to complete that uh, the thesis but the the parallel is uh, it was very similar i mean just like how uh, mma would requ- would uh, require you know interpreting those signals uh, whether it is radiation or gravitational waves or or cosmic rays uh, how are we going to interpret them and make sense out of those uh, messenger signals a very similar problem was given in this case it was it was satellites images that are coming in uh, that needed to be interpreted and i was also using a very old technology called expert systems and expert systems were rule based uh, but but we all know 
our uh, human brains don't don't work like a rule based system uh, it is much more complex than that uh, but that was the beginning of uh, resurgence of uh, ai and then since since then uh, people have been building neural networks i mean the idea was to uh, mimic uh, from the brain surgery brain uh, research uh, all the functions and and the and the principle that we learn about uh, how neurons work in our brain how do they carry information uh, how do they act on a stimuli how do they transmit the information to the other neurons so all of that study in in, in brain research was fed into the computer science uh, that's when the the artificial neural network started to uh, to come in so they started um, modeling those neural networks based on that research and then machine learning algorithms which i'll cover in a bit uh, are nothing but computer algorithms that uh, that try to learn from the past experience and uh, deep learning is another buzzword uh it is again uh, the how how much knowledge you want to store in the neural network in order for you to to interpret them correctly uh, so those are all part of that uh, evolution so basically the idea behind this slide is to give you uh, that uh, ai and ml has been around uh, but we are living in a very fantastic period where uh, the technology is is a little bit more mature and uh, i think madam uh, talked about uh, uh, the google map and other things uh, that are that are happening Uh, in the uh, in the uh, industry uh, they, they are, we are using them every day uh, whether we whether we know them or not but uh, they do show up uh, but interesting thing is uh, now uh, there are software packages and uh, solutions available where you can use them to solve a particular area in in our case it will be the mma uh, so that's the background of ai and ml a little bit more on the machine learning itself uh, it's a branch of ai in computer science and it's a study of uh, computer algorithms uh, that allow programs to be automatically improved through experience uh, i think there are three types of learning uh, supervised unsupervised and and uh, and reinforcement learning i'll cover some of them in the, in the future slides i mean uh, madam talked about google maps i think i threw in a few other examples netflix is another example of an ai uh, ml system uh, with this covid-19 situation where Uh, a lot of the people who would otherwise gone to a movie would uh, would sit at home and watch um, uh, movies through a streaming live streaming uh, service such as netflix and what they do is they they use an ai ml system in the back end to understand um, the user behavior you know what type of movies are you watching um, how what is the frequency what type of movies you like so all that information get fed into an ai system uh, that is used to make uh, predictions as they go along um so so that is uh, so machine learning is definitely a part of that uh, activity uh, artificial intelligence itself is a much larger scope and uh, it is it is growing every day with a different type of uh, neural network that is coming in and basically ai is nothing but apply, application of these machine learning algorithms onto a specific uh, problem um, so when we say uh, this is an ai network for mma uh, what that means is we have taken some machine learning algorithms apply them to solve an mma problem and it becomes the the ai system for mma uh, just like uh, there is a ai system for map and and live streaming uh, there could be different types of ai systems uh, so ai is a very generic term uh, whereas the machine learning algorithms are specific to the computer algorithms that are powering that uh, those those ai systems i briefly talked about the machine learning techniques um, so there are two types uh, supervised learning Uh, i think here i given a very simple example of a supervised learning where uh, you not only provide an object that you want the the, the system to learn um, so in this case if, let's say we gave a bunch of animals and not only you give them the picture but you also label them right in this case for example we have labeled some of them as uh, two ducks and then the other other one as not duck so basically it's a very simple system uh, that determines whether uh, the given animal is a duck or a not duck Um, so you can imagine you can draw the parallel from here to mma where uh, if you get uh, a gravitational wave signal uh, and uh, electromagnetic radiation from a, from a particle uh, from space uh, you can start labeling them and and uh, during the training process in the model uh, this is what you would do during the training phase uh, you would take an existing uh, already interpreted data and start uh, inputting that uh, both the, the the signature of the wave uh or the signal that you received from from the from the particle uh, or the object from the space and then you associate with with a label and then that's how the, the typically the the training of the model happens uh, in a very structured way so this this means uh the the model will understand that if it sees something very similar to 
uh, that particular uh, signature of the of the of the signal then it will start uh, co comparing and start predicting uh, that it looks something like a gravitational wave uh, and hence this needs to be uh, a solar flare system or a supernova uh, event so those are the type of uh, training model that you would go through in mma but coming back to this example uh, basically it, it basically allows the model to to learn and then when it predicts it becomes a very simple proposition you, you provide for example uh, and another bird that looks very similar to uh, what has been learned then the predictive model what it does is it goes through the pattern matching and the pattern recognition algorithms and then uh, understand that uh, it is closer to uh, the animal called the duck or a bird duck um, so what they do is they go through uh, what are known as a confidence factor after the uh, ai prediction is done uh, they would they would uh, they would compute the the confidence factor and determine uh, that the highest matching uh, label here is is uh, is the bird. Uh, so we will do a similar uh, exercise in MMA as well. Uh, so we'll say when a different uh, signal or a brand new signal comes along, the model will will iterate it through and then come up with the with the prediction and say, yeah, this is uh, from a particular from a particle X, Y, and Z that I've seen before. Uh, so it's a very similar approach uh, that that is used in many of these uh, uh, fields. But the example that I gave here is a very simple one, so you can get an idea of how the supervised learning happens uh, in terms of uh, creating the model and then using them to predict. On the other hand, on the unsupervised learning, it's also called clustering algorithms. Uh, you don't specify uh, any particular label, so you just randomly give those uh, pictures and let the system learn by itself. And uh, so the way they do that is by clustering them. And the disadvantage of this one is uh, it's not going to be very accurate uh, because you've not specifically uh, done the learning in a structured way. And uh, so obviously the results are not going to be great. So most of the systems that I see today in the in the AI field is all on the supervised uh, uh, learning scheme. Um, so, so that's what I would say. Let's say if you were looking at and applying uh, AI ML to an MMA, uh, then I would uh, strongly recommend taking a look at um, uh, any supervised algorithm uh, that is out there. So I think I'll cover some of the um, the the AI frameworks in the in, in the later slides. So when you go through them, uh, one of the things that you want to look for is how how accurate uh, these models are uh, for a for a similar problem. Uh, so you want to pick those models and and the and the algorithms needed and then apply them to 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 MMA. Uh, the last uh, type of learning is called reinforcement learning. Uh, so majority of our human uh, brain, I mean, basically the way that our brain understands and learn things is through reinforcement. Uh, whether it is in the form of a child that is trying to learn in the early days of uh, childhood or uh, any system that we are building, uh, typically the way it works is you have an intelligent agent uh, that is basically uh, understanding the environment uh, through some sort of state information. So, and then once it understands the environment, it takes an action and uh, it gets a feedback from the environment in the form of a reward. And then the agent basically uh, factors that into, into the next action. So it basically understands that if I gave this action, this was a reward, it was a positive reward or a negative reward, or I need to adapt my next action appropriately. So the intelligent agents constantly learn from the environment, uh, both from the state as well as the, the feedback uh, that, is, that is the direct result of the action. And then it, that's how they learn over a period of time. A classic example here is uh, is computer games. Uh, you all would have seen, you know, chess games uh, playing against humans. And what they do is uh, they the the games would uh, understand the environment, which is a player, and then start making a move, and then understand what the player's move was. That is nothing but a feedback coming back, and that's how it builds the intelligence over a period of time. And uh, as the game, the computer game plays with more and more players, uh, it has all the knowledge. Uh, in terms of uh, how the humans uh, uh, react to those um, actions. So this is another example of uh, how reinforcement learning works. Uh, so this is something that uh, you may also want to take a look at uh, when you apply uh, uh, the same algorithms to MMA. For example, let's say you built a model for, for MMA and uh, you are iterating it through. And if uh, when, it, when it tries to interpret wrongly, then you want to feed that information back to the system saying that, no, I think you made a mistake here. And that's how the, the, the neural networks will adjust their, uh, their parameters. I mean, neural networks, I think I'll cover that in a minute. Uh, they're all uh, the statistical 
algorithms, Bayesian techniques that we've all learned in the statistics and the theoretical computer science. All of them are modeled into, into neural networks. Uh, so this is the uh, third type of learning. And um, so let's go to the next slide. Just a few concepts and approaches. Uh, I think I already talked about intelligent agents. Uh, they can be software, hardware, systems, uh, but their primary purpose is to correctly interpret external data. So in our case, uh, for uh, multi-messenger astronomy, uh, the, the signals coming in from the extrasolar messengers need to be correctly interpreted. So, and then they learn from uh, the data that they have interpreted. Uh, so use the learnings to specifically achieve some goals. So, the, so anytime you think about applying, always think about what is the intelligent agent that is going to do in my case. Uh, whether in the case of um, uh, Google Map or in the case of uh, MMA, there is an agent, uh, intelligent agent that is uh, constantly understanding the environment, uh, understand the input and uh, what it has learned so far, and then try to apply in the, in the, in the action next time around. Um, so artificial neural networks, uh, like I already mentioned, they are inspired by uh, how our brains work, uh, how in the neurons work in our brains. Uh, the simplistic way to look at it is there is a bunch of input neurons uh, that act on stimuli. Uh, stimuli is any input coming into uh, into you, whether it is our visual system or our auditory system. Uh, so the inputs are coming in. And uh, the, the, the equivalent analogy on, on any field is uh, any signal coming in from MMA could be, uh, could be an input. And the hidden layers of the neurons uh, that contains an, uh, the knowledge. Um, so our model that I talked about uh, for for MMA or nothing but uh, hidden neurons or hidden networks uh, that that has that information, and uh, so when the input neuron gives that information to to hidden neurons, they work on it and then they 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 activate the output neurons and that's what uh, sends that action item to to the external world. So modern AI systems they all uh, work on some variation of this uh, ANN and uh, provide programming uh, framework for 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 scientists and engineers. Um, so in summary, I think AI uh, basically uh, consists of you know, building those uh, neural networks um, and then uh, how to constantly update them as we learn about the environment more and more. Um, so it is not like a static program where you write once and then you forget about it. Uh, it is always a constant process of, uh, of uh, improving them uh, through, through, through time, over time. Okay, so we have learned about MMA. Uh, we know that there is uh, plenty of... Um, uh, challenges in there. Um, and then we also learned about AI ML. Uh, so how are we going to apply uh, AI and ML to, to MMA? What is the motivation, right? So if you think about it, there's a huge amount of data. I think as we talked about, uh, there is millions, if not billions of astrophysics um, uh, processes that are happening in, in the universe. And uh, that data, uh, like I said, it's no longer about uh, a telescope. It is all about different instruments uh, sophisticated instruments collecting data. Uh, so there's a lot of huge amount of data that needs to be uh, processed in real time. And that is that is definitely a challenge uh, for, the, for the technology. And then sophisticated signal processing algorithms. As I mentioned, I think uh, the gravitational waves are very sensitive. Uh, you need to have um, a very specific uh, interferometer, laser interferometer uh, to, to observe those uh, waves. Um, so the signals from those waves um, so you need to have very good signal processing algorithms that can uh, kind of uh, linearly interpolate if there is any missing uh, pattern in the signals. So the, sig the signal processing algorithms have to be a lot more sophisticated. Uh, that means there is more uh, computing power and, and storage uh, required uh, for, for, that, um, for the problem to be solved. And typically in, 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 in astronomy, especially in MMA, uh, simulating, uh, let's say a specific event, uh, simulating the next solar flare or simulating the say, next supernova or any event you can take off, you can think of, uh, is going to be an important um, uh, aspect of uh, the research. As well as predicting, right? Uh, based upon all the conditions, uh, when do you think the next thing would happen? Uh, so, of course, uh, we're not there 100% in predicting all those uh, uh, galactic processes, but at least uh, we are always trying to 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 predict. Uh, so those are, those are the three areas of uh, uh, interest that I can see where uh, there is a there is a need to apply uh, AI ML techniques to to MMA and the technologies involved like I mentioned big data is definitely one of them uh, because there is a ton of data that needs to be analyzed a large distributed computing system such as cloud 
Um, as you know, uh, it is impossible to have uh, a system in your lab to, to, to manipulate or interpret all these data uh, in real time. You need to have a distributed computing system. Uh, fortunately, we have cloud technology that can come into uh, help. I think tomorrow, uh, Mr. Rajesh Kumar is going to talk about that, uh, all the various uh, cloud technology that are out there and how uh, some of them can be applicable for, for, for MMA. But for today's uh, topic, we will focus more on the AI and ML uh, algorithms, and that technology can be uh, can be used for uh, simulating as well as for, for predicting. Uh, interestingly, this work is already started, uh, so it's not something new. Uh, I can send you some papers. Actually, in fact, later slides I have given some references to the current work. Uh, what people have done is uh, they have const constructed what is known as an M MMA and a pipeline. So the easiest way to uh, to visualize that is. Uh, if you have taken you know, 3D graphics uh, course or, or research in that area, uh, there are three-dimensional graphics pipelines that people uh, build uh, in, in graphic systems. Um, so basically, you start with primitives and then you start applying some geometrical uh, algorithms or processes like uh, rotation and magnification, spacing, and so on. And then you start applying shading algorithms, texturing algorithms. So it's like a series of uh, operations that go in a pipeline. Um, so MMA. Uh, has already come up with a similar set of steps uh, that are needed. Let's say if you get a series of um, uh, signals from, from, from the objects, uh, how do you put them through this pipeline? And that, at, at, at every one of the steps, what kind of analysis that one needs to do, that it has been processed, then you send it to the next phase, and so on. So there is a pipeline uh, for MMA that has been uh, already in, in works. Um, so one way is to uh, take that as an example and see how we can use that uh, to 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 simulate uh, the next event, and then how do we apply our um, uh, AIML techniques uh, to do that? Um, so this requires massive computing, uh, clearly, uh, because of the amount of data that is involved and uh, amount of uh, number of events that happens uh, in a day. Uh, that, that that also is a big factor. Plus, uh, you need uh, things to be done in real time or or near real time, uh, because uh, the astronomers could be waiting for that uh, for the data. Uh, so because of all this, it's a very active uh, research of applying AI ML to, to, to MMA. And um, uh, one of the references, like I mentioned, uh, it's, a, it's a very um, interesting field where uh, it is not only astronomers, but uh, computer science people, mathematicians, um, as well as uh, uh, physicians, I mean, uh, people who are physicists who are uh, doing work on the, on the instruments, they all get together and, and find out what are the areas that we need to, we need to solve. Uh, in uh, in this space. So I'll give you some examples of that uh, in the future slides. Here is one, for example, uh, LIGO India. Uh, LIGO stands for uh, Linear Interferometer um, uh, Gravitational Wave Observatory. It's a mouthful <laughs> uh, phrase, uh, but basically uh, what happened is in the, uh, after the supernova event in 1987 uh, in Caltech and MIT in, in US, uh, they formed an observatory. Uh, the purpose of that observatory is to is to detect, uh, measure, and analyze uh, gravitational waves uh, coming from the particles. Um, so, so that is done through the uh, fine instrument called laser interferometer. And uh, so, this this is a very uh, sophisticated lab uh, that is uh, that is fully equipped with uh, uh, instruments as well as uh, computing uh, computing uh, needs like uh, grid computing and cloud computing systems. Uh, Lego India uh, is uh, is part of an inter-university center for astronomy and astrophysics. It is based in Pune, uh, and they're doing some great work in the space. I think I've given a diagram in the slide. Uh, what they do is they they kind of mix all these uh, technologies, including uh, your um, uh, X-ray and other um, uh, radiation-related uh, uh, fields, as well as the quantum theory and other related uh, uh, subject matter. Plus, they also have uh, data centers and the grid and cloud computing. So all of them come into pictures in their in their research lab. And of course, they work with the colleges and other institutions. So one area I can think of if, uh, if somebody is interested in uh, in doing some interdisciplinary research in, in combining AI and ML with MMA, uh, you know, universities or the, or the institutes like the LIGO India could be a great place to start with uh, because they're already in the MMA uh, space. Uh, they are dealing with uh, uh, those type of uh, problems, and then we can. I can clearly see a, a, an arm added here for for AIML, uh, where we can bring in some of those uh, newer algorithms to start simulating and start uh, predicting those uh, those events. 
so please check out uh, lego india uh, it's a great place to to start as well um here in the slide i just throw in some uh, some high level steps in terms of how do you go about and and solving a problem you know for example if you are doing a master's thesis or a or a phd thesis uh, off the time finding the problem itself uh, is 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 going to take a lot of time uh, but interestingly and and fortunately uh, interdisciplinary areas are a little bit easier uh, because there is uh, there's plenty of problems to be solved uh, unlike the traditional uh, fundamental uh, sciences like physics and chemistry and biology where it is hard to find a problem that has not yet been solved um, so computer science is slightly better uh, because of the uh, because the field is relatively new and uh, specifically for mma and especially if you are applying ai ml to mma uh, there's definitely a lot of uh, potential uh, to identify a problem uh, in this case i identified mma pipeline as one of the problems but uh, when you if you go through the literature uh, you can find different other types of problems that uh, mma poses to to the astronomers uh, you can pick any problem that is relevant for uh, ai and ml so picking a specific problem is step number 1 then build and train models relevant to the solution so what do i mean by that you build a simulation model for example in this case uh, mmi pipeline you can build a simulation model uh, using an already pre built model for some other field uh, whether it is uh, facial recognition or uh, document extraction optical character recognition there is a bunch of pre uh, built uh, simulation models that are available Uh, so you can take a look at them and then apply them or modify them for your uh, for your mma pipeline problem and uh, select a suitable modeling framework ai modeling framework uh, which i'll cover in the next slide uh, where there are plenty of uh, uh, software at help available uh, you can download uh, you know tensorflow is an example from google uh, where you can uh, download and install any one of these pre built uh, um, machine language uh, machine learning models that um, uh, you want to take so you can take uh, a representative uh, model and then use them for your mmi pipeline uh, problem and then once you identify the model then you train the uh, model with the known data that you have collected uh, over the period of months or years once the training is complete uh, then the next step would be to verify your model using simulated data so uh, that's the next step to make sure that your model is working fine and and then finally you verify the same models using real time or real data coming from the from the messenger data um in this case for example if you if you collaborate with uh, institutes like lego india you could potentially get some real data from uh, from their observatory and uh, so you can use that real data to make sure that your models are uh, working fine both in terms of simulation as well as for uh, for prediction so like i said you know in, in an hour we cannot solve any problem but at least uh, the motivation for uh, for this webinar is to uh, is to expose you to some of the uh technologies as well as some potential opportunities uh, to apply the technologies to an area such as uh, such as mma and some of these high level steps are uh, something that people follow uh, let's say if you are in a different field uh, let's say you are in a, a gene analysis field in in in, in, a, in a biochemistry uh, field it will be a very similar set of steps uh, identify the problem get the model and 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 then train the model and then verify the model using simulated and then real data Uh, so that's what i would recommend if if you are interested in uh, in in pursuing uh, research in this uh, in this topic um so like i said um before uh, you know 5 10 years ago uh, ai ml was uh, was relatively new uh, not too much uh, software modules were available uh, so you need to build everything from scratch uh, but now it is very different right i think uh, we also talked about um mma requires large computing power uh, such as cloud and uh, the popular uh, cloud providers are google amazon and microsoft and all of them have uh, an ai ml framework um google calls it tensorflow amazon calls it sage maker neo and microsoft uh, cognitive uh, toolkit uh, but fundamentally what they do is they try to abstract uh, the the learning algorithms uh, machine learning algorithms so that you don't have to reinvent what they have done and they make it easier for you to uh, to train the model and and then use them for your application to start with uh, clearly all of them are getting used uh, commercially uh, like airbnb ebay and others uh, they use um, uh, tensorflow uh, they provide a bunch of tools and libraries uh, so if you are a, a mma researcher or a computer science um, uh, faculty or or a student master student phd student 
uh, who wants to uh, develop uh, an AI ML algorithm for, for MMA, then you can download these libraries and tools uh, from, from Google, uh, pick uh, any one of those pre-built uh, models. Uh, let's say they have used it for uh, gene analysis or uh, uh, optical character recognition, pick any one of them that is relevant and, and closer to uh, your MMA uh, uh, problem. Uh, then you can modify the, the the models in such a way that uh, it'll be applicable for for what you're trying to do. Uh, so Amazon has got a similar uh, machine learning algorithm as well uh, for for developers, and they are also getting used uh, quite heavily. Uh, Microsoft has a deep learning framework, uh, and they they call it um, uh, BrainScript. They have a different programming language. Uh, they also internally use that for for their own uh, services like Bing and Skype. So I just thought I would give some. Uh, introduction to some of the popular frameworks. Of course, there are many other uh, AI ML framework that one can take a look at, uh, but for any researcher, uh, in order to get started, uh, you can start with one of these and, and, then, and then as uh, things go by, uh, you can take a look at others as well. Um, but one thing that I would always tell uh, somebody who is looking for a, uh, a PhD topic or a master's uh, thesis topic, uh, you know, finding the problem and then spending uh, as wide as possible to to understand what the problem what problems are there uh, would be the most important step. And then once you identify the problem, then you go deep and, and then try to understand uh, all the characteristics of the problem and then how to how to solve them in a number of ways. I mean, one example I can think of is you know the application of each one of these frameworks uh, for for an MMA problem itself could be a great uh, uh, PhD topic uh, because that is something that that is not done. Uh, and in fact, uh, the, 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 some of the uh, research article that I'm seeing on this uh, field is, is relatively new. Uh, people are barely uh, getting into it and people are understanding that, yes, uh, different uh, community people need to, need to gather, like computer scientists, uh, astronomers, and, uh, and physicists need to come in and, and collaborate and do it. Um, so so this, I think the timing is good uh, that if somebody wants to get into this space, uh, it's relatively new and there are a lot of problems that can be solved. And the good news is the technology exists today. And, uh, and so the, you're not, you don't have to start from scratch. Uh, there's plenty of things that you can, you can start uh, right now. And then as you go along, you can tweak it and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun and doing that. Okay, so that is, uh, just give, I hope that gives you an idea of um, uh, the two fascinating fields, uh, AI, NML and, and MMA. And uh, where there is a need for uh, automation and, and interpretation. Uh, so in these two slides, what I've given is I've given some references to, to MMA. Uh, of course, my MMA uh, Wikipedia itself. And here is a great article from Forbes uh, where you'll get the inspiration and motivation that uh, this just came out six months ago. Uh, they said uh, why uh, MMA is going to be the future of astrophysics. Uh, that's rightly done. I think that article is very well written. Uh, that will give you a lot of motivation in terms of uh, how the astronomy uh, has grown over the period from just to pure telescopes uh, to, to all kinds of instruments and, uh, and, and systems that can detect uh, very hard to find uh, signals that are coming from, from the outer space. Uh, so I would definitely urge you to, to read this article. Uh, of course, this is the paper I was talking about. Uh, this about 20, 25 people got together and write this report, wrote this report. It's a deep learning for MMA. Uh, so it is basically uh, identifying the problem and saying that, yes, uh, this, is, uh, this is a problem that needs to be solved uh, because it cannot be solved by a bunch of astronomers anymore uh, because the data is just uh, too much to handle and uh, it's going to take a lot of time. And uh, so they need the, uh, the technology help and, and the deep learning is uh, something that they are looking at. Uh, so I just thought that is just one example, of course, if you look around, uh, if you're seriously getting into this field as a, as a master's thesis topic or a PhD topic, uh, then, then you will find a lot more uh, literature uh, where uh, people are trying to uh, apply these uh, learning algorithms to, to MMA. Uh, then I also, uh, given the Lego India uh, site, I would also strongly urge you to take a look at their, uh, their activities as well, uh, because they, they would have done already some work in uh, in, in, in applying the, the computer technology, not necessarily AI, but, uh, but some of the grid computing and cloud computing technologies to MMA or some part of the MMA they would have already applied. So you would also learn from that and then see what has been done and uh, see if there is an opportunity to, to collaborate. And at the end of the day, 
uh, this uh, this kind of problems can only only be solved uh, with uh, with uh, collaboration among uh, among different institutions and and uh, and, and, and and companies. Uh, so those are all the references uh, for MMA and uh, AIML. Uh, like I've given all the uh, framework that I talked about uh, from Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. Uh, they're all talked about here, and then some introduction to AI. And then, of course, there are lots of books uh, and tutorials available on AIML. Uh, definitely, an hour is not enough to cover all of them. Uh, but the idea was to uh, is to kind of introduce you to uh, these two topics, and then create the motivation and inspiration. Uh, so, if somebody wants to get into that field, uh, there's plenty of things that can be done, and hopefully, uh, uh, that will be more inspiring. And uh, many more people would get into that field and and, and contribute, and, and make it more successful. I think that is it from my side. I think that was the last slide. Um, so once again, I want to thank uh, the uh, Dr. MGR Engineering College and the Research Institute for giving me an opportunity uh, to present this and, and share that information with, with all of you. Thank you, Dr. Krishna Kumar. Hi, all. This is Dr. Preeta George on behalf of the organizing committee taking up the charge of the latest session of International Faculty Development Program. And there is a saying like this, a lamp does not speak. It introduces itself through its light. And your talk on artificial intelligence, machine learning, multi-messenger astronomy, sheds <clears throat> the light of your contributions and passion towards it. I like to call this session as a big bang explosion of knowledge on the bus terms like artificial intelligence, machine learning, and multi-messenger astronomy. And to walk through this maze of the academic life, one needs the light of wisdom and guidance. We are lucky to have our pillar of support, brain behind this international faculty development program, our Dean, Dr. N.S. Shubhasri, among us. I request ma'am to grace this occasion with a few words. Ma'am, please. Thank you, Dr. Preeta. Hope I'm audible. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So thank you all. Good morning to one and all present here, to all the participants. Good morning, Krishna Kumar, sir. I think that was yet another wonderful session from you. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, I would like to brief the participants regarding our collaboration. So sir uh, is the founder of Instagana Life. And uh, through Ms. Aruna and uh, Dr. Kritika, uh, Dr. MGR University and Instagana, we have entered into a MOU. Actually, this MOU was initiated only for giving project-based learning to the students. Right, sir? Correct, ma But I think from today's uh, session, I think we can also have a collaborative research. So you have uh, <laughs> opened a new avenue. Definitely, uh, as a physicist, I'm very, very excited to know what are the opportunities and how we can work together. So I think today's session is very, very brilliant. And uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for it. Uh, so before uh, uh, just uh, leaving, I, I would like to just leave a message to the participants. Now, many of you are wondering, uh, seeing our topics and uh, the FDP are conducting. So generally, during this COVID time, we have seen only webinars and FDPs on uh, how to do uh, learning, uh, virtual learning or virtual teaching, all those things, right? So when uh, we thought of putting a FDP, we thought that it should be something different. And uh, once having all the good, eminent personality roped in, then only we, uh, we were in the situation of framing the topic for FDP. I think the topic and the speakers are aptly joined together. That is my view. I would like to share my view here. So this is really a multi-dimensional approach. We have given a multi-dimensional approach. It's not a single way we have shown to all the faculty. It's a multi-dimensional approach. And I think uh, the topics covered and the speakers are excellently doing well. So I request the participants to take home all these messages and work on any particular dimension in which they want to do. Uh, I would like to brief the uh, speaker. Yesterday, we had a mentoring session, how the faculty can mentor students in research, entrepreneurship, and various skills. And in the first day, we had 
um, uh, the collaborative research what are all the opportunities we have in the collaborative research so today you have shown a different dimension so i think um, it is a really a very good program hats off to the team that is working behind and uh, once again i thank uh, uh, krishna kumar sir for your support and i think we have to look into many such avenues yes. for even the staff to have a collaborative research so thank you one and all present here and thank you for the opportunity and uh, it's a what really a wonderful job by the team first year btech team even though i am leading but it is my team who are doing it sir i am very proud of my team uh, hats off to you team thank you thank you one and all thank you ma'am uh, sir uh, you can see the uh, questionnaire session uh, uh, light chat on light chats streaming uh, okay. with many questions and okay. uh, i would like to address the first question can we proceed for that sir yeah please go ahead yeah uh, the first question is uh, uh, raised by the sopna uh, what is the difference between artificial intelligence and machine learning oh very good that's a very good question so uh, machine learning is a, is a subset of artificial intelligence it's a branch of uh, artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is a very is a very broad scope uh, it is it is a concept whereas machine learning is a bunch of algorithms a study of algorithms so the best way to say it is uh, machine learning is a subset of ai um, and uh, so ai over a period has been covering uh, all the way from expert systems to what it exists today uh, but machine learning or specific to developing those algorithms that are required uh, like the supervised learning and supervised learning so all of those techniques are collectively called machine learning uh, algorithms and that field uh, is a subset of ai okay uh, sir uh, the next question uh, is uh, how can we integrate artificial intelligence in education oh another fantastic uh, question again so one of the things that uh, we have been exploring at at, at igl is uh, education uh, because of this covid-19 situation uh, everything is now turned around in education right i mean all the in person education is now becoming online uh, virtual classrooms and uh, and then how do we enable the teachers I mean, teachers i mean a lot of the times they hear about the frontline workers in hospitals uh, they're doing great but i think teachers needs a lot more credit uh, because overnight they have been asked to change their way of uh, uh, teaching uh, to a something totally entirely different uh, to an audience that is not used to this type of uh, learning right so hats off to Uh, your college as well as to many institutions who are trying to adapt to it and they are still uh, learning with it so one of the things that we are trying to understand or trying to help from from our side is uh, how can we have uh, let's say an intelligent chatbot right one of the one of the areas of um, artificial intelligence that is very popular is um, uh, is chatbots chatbots are nothing but software robots that uh, it can be your personal assistant so just think of a classroom assistant uh for it for a teacher or a mm-hmm. student uh, that can monitor all the students progress as well as in terms of how they do in terms of their coursework assignment work uh their reading material uh, all the things and then re- report that back to uh, back to the teacher and then so you can think of uh, a virtual classroom assistant uh, in the form of an ai and then it can okay. learn over a period of time right for example if you know that the particular student is Uh, need some help in in mathematics or need some help in physics so it can it can understand that uh, that environment uh, of of the student and then predict uh, or suggest some some additional reading materials so there's plenty of um, problems in uh, in current day uh, education uh, that can be addressed through through ai and ml i just gave some example yeah. yes sir as you have truly said uh, the covid 19 have changed the many lives especially i would like to tell the life of the teachers and we need some assistance and uh, through the artificial intelligence uh, i think by uh, after the covid 19 we will be able to do some uh, wonders in the classroom definitely that that is my hope as well madam i think uh, you you said uh, i think this is an area that needs a lot of help, uh, help so yeah. i think uh, in our team is right now working on some aspect of it so hopefully we'll share some information so Thank you. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, the next question is from Sudhaman. Sure. Um, what is the accurate rate of prediction using artificial intelligence and the machine learning algorithms? Yeah. So, so the accuracy of prediction it dep- depends on. The, I think we talked about uh, supervisory learning and unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning. So, so the accuracy really depends on the model that you picked and how you train the model. Right. It is. Um, uh, it's very similar to you know you're, you're teaching a child. 
and uh, the, how far you have taught the child and the knowledge that has gone in will really depend on, I mean, the accuracy of their output will depend on what they learned, right? So it's very similar. Uh, so, that, so that's why it is important to pick the right model, uh, the training model, and make sure that you chose the right algorithms to, to train. And those two will determine the accuracy of the, of the prediction. And uh, of course, if, uh, if it is an unsupervised learning, uh, the accuracy is going to be very low. If it is supervised learning, the accuracy is very good. One example I can give, facial recognition. Uh, you, can, you can clearly see the accuracy is very high. Right? You go to Facebook, uh, they can recognize your face instantly. And all of that is done through, uh, through ML. And that, uh, that, that technology and the algorithm has been, uh, has been, they've been working on it, they've matured. So definitely the accuracy is really very high. Whereas if you go to different uh, part of the uh, uh, different field in science, the accuracy may not be the same. So what I would say is any area that requires uh, more accuracy or, or the accuracy is not enough, that means there is more work to be done in training the model and, and verifying the model and, and coming up with a better model uh, so the accuracy is, is better. Uh, so there is always a trade-off between how much training you can do and then how accurate your prediction is going to be. Um, so depending upon uh, your, your particular problem that you're trying to solve, uh, you, need to, you need to strike the balance between the two. Yes, sir. Uh, the, our next question is from Jayana then. Uh, how artificial intelligence uh, works in healthcare, especially in COVID-19 situation? Right. So, so one area, I don't know if you have noticed, um, uh, Google and, um, uh, and Apple, they have released um, a contact tracing API. So basically, uh, it, can, um, it can determine uh, in your neighborhood, anybody has COVID-19 infection or not. Um, so basically, they have opened it up to the public. So all that information needs to come to a hospital, right? Basically, they need to have uh, all the information about the, the so-called contract tracing. Uh, who, has, who has that infection? Who, who are the surrounding people? All of that information needs to be fed into a, a system that can understand and can capture that knowledge. And then if it has a history of, let's say, in the last three months, uh, this has been the trend okay. in a particular area. How do you predict that for the next three months in that particular area? So this definitely a uh, machine learning algorithm that can be applied for contact tracing uh, area in, in COVID-19. I can see, I will see, I can clearly see uh, definitely, definitely uh, more systems coming in uh, with the different models and, and start applying them in, in the hospitals and, and the healthcare, uh, health ministries and stuff like that. Uh, you will see more and more uh, AI ML based systems coming in and, and helping there. And I, I think uh, the Arugya Setu app is uh, something like that. Uh, no? Absolutely. Uh, exactly, madam. I think that is, that is the, that's the beginning of it. I think right now it is collecting data. Um, so uh, so right now, uh, what, what will happen is the backend system will start gathering the data, uh, start creating models around it, and then they'll start predicting it or they'll start creating simulated work. Uh, I think all of that will be, will be happening in the background. Um, so eventually, when that, when that app becomes more intelligent, uh, then yeah. it can start, uh, start giving a little bit more uh, services to, to, the, to the community. That's society. Yeah. yeah, society, correct. Uh, sir, uh, the next question is from Patma Sri. Uh, differentiate between uh, machine learning and data science. Uh, machine learning and data science. Uh, machine learning is an algorithm. Uh, data uh -huh. science is is is, is, um, is a field, right? It's a field in terms of how uh, you would interpret data uh, in, uh, in in what you have collected. Um, so applying the, the the scientific methodologies to data is is, is what that is. So I think. Uh, so it might look very similar, but uh, one is algorithm based. Uh, the other one is more of a, is, a, is, a, is, a, an, is an analytical field, I would say. That would be the difference, yeah. And uh, then the last question, I think so. The, how is soft computing related to artificial intelligence by Jacqueline? So, yeah, soft computing, um, I think um, uh, it is uh, it's somewhat related. I think one, one area where um, I could think of is uh, you keep the... Uh, the 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 input and output relationship in a computing uh, a little bit flexible. So so in that sense, uh, your output is not going to be purely dependent on uh, what you what you programmed it for. Um, so they are somewhat similar, uh, but I think the the AI is like I said, it is uh, it is much more broader than than soft computing. 
uh, i hope all the questions have been uh, clearly well explained by our uh, resource person dr krishna kumar and uh, i like to thank uh, krishna kumar and i like to tell that uh, uh, this was a very interactive session and the uh, live comments shows that uh, your session was uh, very interacting and uh, fascinating to all of us thank you madam artificial intelligence is all around us and plays an inevitable role in our daily lives to a layman understanding it makes our life easy connecting with a friends through emails from chess playing computers to self driving cars and parking vehicles digital assistants and much more artificial intelligence and machine learning was once a fanciful concept from the science fiction but now a daily reality in the prevailing situation of covid 19 the greatest contribution from this field which has become a boon to many lives is netflix and with this uh, not i like to call upon uh, dr kalisuri from the department of mathematics to propose the vote of thanks gratitude is the memory of the heart and with this uh, over to dr kalisuri can you hear me ma'am uh, yes, can you ma hear me yes 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 ma good morning all i am dr k kalisuri assistant professor from mathematics department it is a great privilege to propose vote of thanks on this special day on behalf of dr mgr education research institute first year btech campus i wish to express my sincere thanks to our honorable president sri acs arun kumar and our vice chancellor dr geeta lakshmi mera i wish to thank dr v siril raj joint register for academic and administration and dr kaushalya coordinator international relation office for the support i wish to thank dr db jabaraj joint register e and s and dr n s subhashree dean e and s for the continuous motivation and support for all the events i wish to thank our resource person dr n s krishna kumar sir for spending his valuable time on this occasion his speech about applying artificial intelligence and machine learning technique to multi messenger astronomy the way in which he explained was very excellent and he answered all the question which were raised by the participant i extend my special thanks to all those organizing staff members and all delegates who participate for making the event a very successful one so once again thank you all over to preetha ma thank you ma'am uh, participants your attention kindly fill the attendance link which is provided in the live comments and stay tuned with us for our fourth session on international faculty development program on multidimensional scaling from science to technology tomorrow sharp at 10 am stay home stay safe happy learning and it's thank you thank you ma'am